We're now going to look at how to undo multiplication when we're talking about matrices. You're used to undoing things like multiplication with division, but when we're doing matrices, we have to do something a little bit different. And what we want to do is get an inverse of the matrix. And when I multiply the inverse of a matrix times the matrix, I get something called the identity matrix, which is a square matrix that has ones on the main diagonals and zeros everywhere else. So the main diagonal just means kind of going down the um, from top left to bottom right, and then anything else in there is zeros. Okay, you don't need to write the blue part. So if we want to check and see if two matrices are inverses, we're going to multiply them. If they're in, they are inverses if the solution is the identity matrix. So if you open your flap, you're going to see these two problems. Because of space, I'm going to cheat a little bit and um, just move down my matrix here and draw my grid. So like we did last class, 2 times 5 is 10, and then 3 times negative 3 is minus 9. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times negative 3 is minus 15. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and 5 times 2 is 10, which means once I combine those, I'm going to get a matrix of 1, 0, 0, 1. So yes, these are inverses of each other because I got my 1s going on the diagonal from top left to bottom right, and then I have zeros in the other spots. Next, I have these beautiful problems where I kind of scribbled out because I wanted something specific to happen. So yours look a little bit nicer on the page, but forgive my sloppiness on here. All right, so now I don't need that. And we're going to do our grid. Three times negative two is negative six. Four times three is 12 divided by two is six. Three times one is three minus four times one half would be two. Negative two, two times three is six divided by two is three. One times one is one minus one. So when we simplify this, we get zero, one, one, zero. This is not an identity matrix. So once again, identity matrix is ones on the diagonal from top to bottom, um, top left to bottom right. So that's, those two are not inverses of each other. So how do we get an inverse of a matrix if I know one of the matrices. To do that, we're gonna to need to use something called the determinant. So in the determinant, we are going to call, uh, we're, do, we're only gonna do two by two by hand, otherwise it gets complicated. So we're gonna say A, B, C, D, like that. So if I wanna find the determinant, and that's what my notation is, D, E, T of matrix A, we're gonna take A, D and multiply them. So A times D, minus b times c. So a times d minus b times c. And the importance of a determinant is that a matrix has an inverse if and only if the determinant of that matrix, so determinant, we're calling it a, is not equal to zero. So if my determinant is equal to zero, then that means there is not an inverse for my matrix. So let's practice whether we have um, an inverse over here and find our determinants. So for the first one, we have 7 times 7. I'm going to write it out, but obviously some of you could just do this in your head. Minus 6 times 8. Okay. So that's going to give me 49 minus 48, which is 1. So yes, it would have an inverse. Or rather, has an inverse. I should be a little more clear right there. That's OK. All right, now we're going to do 1 times 2. 
minus 2 times 1, 2, which gives me 0. So there are, there's not an inverse for that matrix. Now we're going to learn how to actually find the inverse. So we found out that if the determinant is not 0, an inverse exists, but how do we get the inverse? To get the inverse, first we're going to find our de determinant, and then we're going to do 1 over the determinant, and we have to switch up the order of our matrix. So what is going to happen is that A and D are going to switch places. So D and A switch places, but B and C stay in the same spot, but change signs. Okay, so I'm going to put negative, but it doesn't mean they're negative. It means they change signs. So switch A and D, change signs of B and C. Okay, so the first diagonal, you switch. The second diagonal, you change the signs. Okay, so let's see on the inside flap how we are going to do this. So my first step is to find my determinant. So once again, the determinant, you multiply 5 times 1 would be 5 minus 3 times 2 is 6. So I get that my determinant is negative 1. So if I want to find the inverse, I do 1 over my determinant, which is negative 1, and then I'm going to multiply. I don't put my original matrix. I have to switch stuff around. So on my first column, I'm going to switch the order, 5 and 1. On the second column, I change the signs. Or, I don't know why I'm saying column, diagonal. We change the signs. And now we have scalar multiplication, which is what we did before. That means this is just negative 1. And we multiply negative 1 to everything inside. So negative 5, 3, 2, negative 1 would be my inverse. All right. So once again, if I want to find my inverse matrix, I need to find my determinant first. So my determinant would be first diagonal, 5 times 4, minus my second diagonal, which is negative 2 times negative 7. Make sure you're careful on signs right here. So I have 20, then minus, that changes to a positive 14. So my determinant is 6. So for my inverse, I need to do 1 over my determinant, which is 6, times my new matrix, which remember is going to be where I switch my first diagonal, so 4 and 5, and then change the signs of my other 2 and 7. And when I multiply these, we can just leave it. Sometimes you can just leave it 1 over 6 outside, but we're just going to put everything over... 6 inside. I don't even need you to simplify right now. Just leave it and we're good to go.